Welcome back to this lecture series on distributions management. In this particular video, we'll be talking about intensity of distribution and distributions in rural markets. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing and clicking on that notification bell so that you'll be notified when we'll be uploading videos like this. Now, in this particular video, when you see a QR code that is displayed in your screen, you can scan on that QR code and you'll be redirected to a website that contains the source of our discussion in this particular video. Now, distribution intensity. As organizations develop their marketing channel strategies, an important question arises regarding distribution intensity. There is some freedom in most of the industries for a firm to determine which channel they will use and how much volume each channel will receive. Weighing the pros and cons of various channels, both in terms of the number of channels and the volume within each channel, can have a significant strategic impact on the firm's position in the market. So whether or not you chose these particular partners, well, it's up to you. As long as it is, is strategically decided and it has a positive impact on the sales, volume, and profitability of the company, then well and good. Now, what are the different distribution intensities? Companies going for exclusive distribution networks offer exclusive rights to a dealer to distribute its product in a particular geographic area. These dealers cannot sell the product of other companies. Companies going for exclusive distribution cultivates and sustain an image of quality and prestige for the product. Exclusive distribution allows the company to have a greater control over intermediaries in terms of price, credit, and promotions. Exclusive distribution usually used with high price products that are significantly or that have significant service requirements with limited numbers of customers in particular geographic area. One of the best examples of this is car distributorship. Of course, if you're selling Toyota, most probably you are selling Toyota only and by a geographic location, meaning you are the only person that you are the only company that is distributing Toyota in a particular geographic location and nobody else, right? That's exclusive distribution. Next is what we call a selective distribution. Now, in selective distribution, the companies going for selective distribution sells the product through selective number of dealers and retailers. Brand image is an important factor for companies going for selective distribution. A selective retailer will help to create a favorable impression about the product and the company in the mind of the customers. Companies prefer to offer selective distribution to outlets with good facilities, resources, and image. Selective distribution strategy help companies to reduce cost while establishing a strong working relationship with the channel partners. You don't have to partner with a lot and all of distributors in a particular geographic area. You only have to select those of which you think that have parallel perspective to your company and of which have sound customer line, a loyalty among the customers in a geographic location. And so you have to select specific channel partners. You cannot just select anyone because it might lead to more cost instead of gaining profit. And so you have to select your distribution partners well. The last one is what I call as intensive distribution. Companies opting for intensive distribution stocks their goods as many outlets as possible. Time and place utility are important consideration for companies adopting intensive distribution. An intensive distribution strategy links a product sales potential to the number of outlets selling the particular product. Companies selling products such as cold drinks, confectionaries, stationery, soap, detergents, and other convenience goods try to sell their products through every possible retail outlets to generate the maximum coverage and sales. If you notice, where well, say convenience stores, most probably almost all of the brands of soap and detergent 
are present in all convenience stores all throughout the country. Why? Because they are utilizing intensive distribution because there's a lot of competitors in the particular market and you cannot allow a singular distributor to distribute the product because that would be very inefficient. And so you will just distribute the product to all retailers possible in the entire geographic location upon which you're operating so as to maximize the potential that you can reach the optimum level of consumer number. Now, in rural markets, there are a lot of problems that may arise in the distribution of goods or services. The distribution in rural markets is quite risky than in metropolitan cities. Why? Because there are high costs of transportation, critical inventory management, because there is a required amount of time in order that the next product will arrive. And so you have to think correctly of how much product is necessary to dispose in a particular period of time. Otherwise, you'll go out of stock. Natural disasters and delays in the, in the delivery because probably at some point the delivery truck is figured into an accident for whatever reason. And so there are a lot of problems in distributions management in the rural markets. Now, there are three factors in designing rural distributions. First is appropriate. Appropriateness of distribution model with the product or services of the company is crucial for rural marketing. Distribution models with the local inventories are suitable for products with high demand, especially if transportation is a large segment of the total cost. These models suffer high inventory costs but lower transportation costs and provide a faster delivery and response time. Your distribution strategy must be appropriate, which means that you cannot just deliver any time on channel partner in the remote part of the country just because you wanted to deliver one. No, it must be appropriate when you partner a channel member in the remote part, you have to calculate well what are the appropriate means of sending these products to the intended customers or to the channel partners on the other part of the country. You have to think correctly, otherwise you may incur unnecessary costs with the sales potentials at similar level. There's no increase in sales potential or there's no increase in sales volume, yet you're incurring costs because you're not thinking correctly upon the delivery of those products in the channel partner's geographic location. Next is what they call as the aggregate. Low population density and presence of rural customers in wide geographical area can increase the cost of distribution. Hence, company can aggregate customer demands into central locations to reduce inventory and transportation costs. You don't have to partner channels in the remote part of the country or a particular geographic location where there are no people in there when when there's nobody in there nobody will purchase your product and that is a bad idea in the first place and so what you're going to do is you have to concentrate based on the geographic location and where there is a higher density of population in a geographic area and concentrate your effort in that geographic area because those who are far, who can still travel into that strategic location, can still purchase and avail of your product. And so that is what we call as an aggregate. You don't have to distribute to all places in the universe in order for you to get sales. You just have to strategically place your product, select a channel partner in a geographic location that are accessible to the target intended audience. And then the next one is a point. Companies are appointing local rural entrepreneurs to increase the last mile of product delivery and sales. You can, you know, partner small-time traders in order that the product be delivered to the end of civilization at the most remote parts of the world. You can appoint and partner these small-time merchandisers, 
so that you'll not have to incur costs in the delivery of those places which are very remote. You can only partner these who are willing to risk at that level of business. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. See you in the next video.